As reported in Taiwan, many employees work long hours. Stress and health problems caused by overwork aren't uncommon. In recent years, labor activists have been trying to change a corporate culture that encourages working off the clock. While they have had some success, they say there's still a long way to go. Today, Taichung District Court bailiff Jian Jiada is in Taipei on court business. After a day of work, he checks into his hotel. Once he's in his room, he takes out his medicine. This is medication with painkiller and caffeine. Mainly, it serves to relieve pain, but because it contains caffeine, it also mentally stimulates me. For as long as he can remember, Jen has carried pain relief medicine with him everywhere he goes. He often experiences muscle pain and has trouble focusing. Doctors have diagnosed him with chronic fatigue syndrome. He also suffers from anxiety. I often feel numbness on the right side of my body, numbness and pain, an aching pain and numbness that gets really intense. It might get painful enough that I want to scream, that kind of pain. So later on, I just started carrying Cymbalta pills with me wherever I went. If I felt at all out of sorts, I would take it. As a bailiff, Jin's job is to maintain law and order in the courtroom. His duties are many. There's a great demand for bailiffs, but too few of them to go around, meaning that Jin has to work extremely long hours. Once, he was on the job for 48 hours straight. You find yourself constantly thinking, I may die at any moment. I even tell my children, if daddy dies, you guys need to be strong. You need to be able to survive on your own. You really do think you could die any day. At private companies too, there are stories of employees dying from overwork. Huang Yiling is a labor advocate whose desk is piled high with cases of overwork, documents from people seeking her help. She's encountered cases where people have died from stress on the job. One case happened these past several years. A worker at a logistics company was halfway through his deliveries when he just suddenly parked his vehicle at the entrance of a building. He was in 30s, almost 40. The building security felt it was strange that the vehicle was there for so long. It turned out the courier was sitting there unconscious. He wouldn't respond. The guard called an ambulance and the courier was rushed to the hospital, but they couldn't save him. In the month before the delivery driver died, he put in 81 hours of overtime. He also suffered from high blood pressure and high cholesterol. It was all too much for his body to bear. Physician Guo Yuliang runs a clinic that treats health conditions resulting from overwork. He said that if a person is already in bad physical shape, protracted periods of overwork can lead to sudden cardiac death. Generally speaking, this happens to those with pre-existing heart conditions. Then they work too long. That's the final straw. If you do overtime for a month straight, doing an extra two hours or more each day, you roughly double your chances of having a stroke. To protect the workplace rights of bailiffs, Jen created a union three years ago and became its director. When he's off on business trips, he takes time to meet his union's members in different parts of the country to talk about the issues they encounter. Together, they've successfully lobbied for schedules that let court bailiffs go home by 11 p.m. But bailiffs at district prosecutors' offices still must work 24-hour shifts. The fight for their rights continues. I think it's quite understandable. When you fight for your rights, your employer is very likely to find a way to mistreat you in some way. Sometimes they even let you go if you try to file a complaint. So unless the employee really can't take it anymore, he's more likely to wait until he's ready to leave. Then he'll file a complaint or a lawsuit. Overwork in Taiwan isn't uncommon. And although labor negotiations have improved working conditions over the past 10 years, the average work week is still 42.2 hours. That's above the labor ministry's 40-hour limit. 
Taiwan's overwork situation has improved lately, but even this improved situation falls short compared to the rest of the world. This is to say, the average work week in the rest of the world is much, much shorter than Taiwan's, especially in developed countries. Even with their high salaries, they work far less than Taiwanese do. So Taiwan still has a long way to go when it comes to work hours and overwork. Workers from all walks of life are the driving force of Taiwan's economy, as well as its public services. To keep the country growing, employees and employers will need to work together to find a balance between profit and personal welfare.